It's already January 1st, so I wanted to show that I have not changed any of my calendars. So I'm gonna do that real quick. October, wow. Anyway, let's replace this. It's already the next year, so I'm just gonna replace the calendar entirely. There we go. But as for this NCT 127 little desk calendar thing, um, it's already completed. And I don't think I'm gonna throw it away. I'm gonna keep the, you know, like the back of every month is a member. Sorry, the cord of my headset. But yeah, this is already completed along with this NCT one. I stopped at June. So now that my calendars and all that are up to date, let's talk about the actual channel itself. So I'm going to switch off into commentary podcast mode. We'll talk about it. Hi everyone, welcome to the Utizen. I just want to take this time to talk about myself, the channel, my goals for this channel, apologize a bit, and just stuff within this nature of an update to talk about the future of this channel. So let's get started. I remember being so excited for this year in terms of the channel and the uploads I had planned. I found it easy because ever since I made this channel, I had different Google Docs of all the things I could make into videos along with my Instagram posts being made into videos as well, which was the whole point of my channel. So I was ready in terms of that and all I had to do was record and edit and of course upload. I had been doing well in the beginning but I kind of fell off because I was just busy with schoolwork and I'm a perfectionist when it comes to making videos. I don't want to put something out if it seemed half-assed or if I didn't like how I explained things or if I didn't like the editing. That's why in my OT6 Zen video I had actually made a video before but I did it all over again because I just didn't like it. And the editing is just atrocious. I'm gonna let you finish that in a second but I really want to talk about how that OT6 Zen video was the most atrocious thing I've ever edited. Well, my K-pop collection video uh, is on the phone right now. They want to, t <laughs> they want to talk real quick. Oh my God, I cannot express how bad that video. Like, it's not the editing; it's the quality of the video. Luckily. I figured out what the problem was, but damn, I feel so bad for uploading that video in like 420p and I cannot fix it. I cannot re-upload it right now or probably ever. <laughs> well, yeah, that's very unforgiving for me, for me to do that for the last video of 2022. Wow. But yeah, I'm always learning. Um, I figured out this uh, software um, for editing, hopefully it does better. Editing TYZ out, let's get back into the video. I hate it so much, but I spent so much time on it already that I just wanted to upload it and work on things I needed to do for school. Editing is really overwhelming for me, though my editing style is not very extravagant. But it still takes a long time and I don't want to be those channels or like those TikTok accounts that put something without effort and upload it. And also it has been very overwhelming with the amount of content I have and what I could make. Like I had so many ready to go documents I can make a video out of but then something comes up and it's more relevant to the time so I start something on that and either I finish it and do nothing about it or I don't finish it at all and I don't go back until the next thing which makes that topic outdated. I have a lot of outdated topics in my drive but I still want to make them into videos because I think most of these topics are important. I've even made thumbnails for most of them. That's how ready to go I was. 
I uploaded a total of 10 times in 2022. That's not even once a month, and I've even uploaded more than once a month and skipped some months. I'm the type of person to not really give out a date or time or schedule for uploads because I can never be too sure, especially with the lifestyle I have. It might not be likely, but I really wish I can do better with the uploading. So I apologize with the horrible schedule and I cannot promise that I will do better in the future, though I want to push myself to do more with this channel and even my main channel. I want this YouTube thing to work. I believe this is the biggest and best way to show my creativity and it's a really fun hobby and I just need the time and motivation to do so. I'm still here. I just cannot make any promises like I said in my OT6Ns video. I'm very occupied with school and some other things behind the scenes in my life to really dedicate my time to YouTube. I know there are a bunch of YouTubers who can, I just can't. So it might just be another year of when I'm free to create something, I will, and if I don't, I don't. I'd rather have enough time to create something really good and upload it than put myself a schedule that I cannot meet and throw out mediocre stuff. Those are the channels and TikToks I really hate and it makes me angry that unique and relevant content like mine and many other commentary K-pop YouTubers that are better than I am get looked over just for mediocre garbage and they get hundreds and thousands and even millions of views sometimes. I'd rather get barely a hundred views for something I put time into than get crazy viral views for something bad. Also, the unfortunate part to say, again, I mentioned that I'm studying in school and it's very occupying and overwhelming and though I tried my hardest, I did not do so well this semester, so I am a little behind on my plan, so I want to focus on trying to get back on track. and get these courses taken care of. It sucks because I cannot use the excuse of, oh, it's because I spent my time on YouTube, because that's not true. I tried my best, but apparently I did not do enough because I ended up failing some courses and some that I was borderline pass or fail, but I failed because they didn't round up my freaking 68. Anyway, yeah, if you thought this year was very dry with uploads, this next year might be even more unforgiving. As you guys could tell from the last video where I shared my K-pop album collection, my parents were blasting music. It's not the first time my family is being loud. In some of my older videos, you can hear my brother playing video games. You can hear my dogs barking or crying. You can also hear the creaking or shutting of doors. It's a big problem, which is another reason why I don't upload that much because sometimes it's too noisy where I cannot upload something. I was honestly so close to not uploading my first run of the album collection video and redoing it all, but it won't be natural if I refilmed everything. But yeah, my house is kind of old and it doesn't help when my family are loud. I just cannot tell them to quiet down because it makes them mad. Sometimes I've told my brothers that I'm going to record something and they will abide, but it doesn't last that long. I do wish to find another place to record that is outside of my home. Well, not outside, because in my very first videos, they were being recorded outside and it was very hectic. Maybe crashing at someone else's house or maybe getting a place of my own, but I do want to have a more quiet and just an overall setting to myself. Who knows, but I would like to apologize with the type of environment I have. I don't know if people have been confused or annoyed with the constant background sounds, but I'm sorry. I know the last section was kind of an update, but this section is more of an update on stuff I said on my channel that I never got back into. I want to start with the video I made about the groups I wanted to get into. Long story short, I did not get into any of these groups I said. I got into more of the groups I said I wanted to get back into, I feel. Looking through my video, I will go one by one and state my status on how I feel about them. Victon, I didn't really do that much, you know, looking into them besides when I, I had added some of their music into my K-pop playlist, but then I heard the stuff about that one member 
that ended up leaving and I was just like, bruh, that is so disappointing. I don't want to get into them. We, I, I just never got into them. I didn't even look up anything about them. I kind of just forgot about them. Elast, same thing. I didn't really care to look up anything about them. The Eddie Influence groups, T01, I didn't get uh, into really. Omega X, Dark B, I didn't do anything. Uh, Dark B, I think their song, Work Hard, I just listened to them a bunch of times. The thing with Omega X, like, their situation was so bad. Like, I wanted to support them, but I just never got into them. And T01, I believe some members left. Or one member left. And I was just like, you know what? I Lots of people are leaving their groups. And I think it's very disappointing with the circumstances that are under it, I think. Gaho, I never really looked into him. Lately, I've been listening to the Wujin Gaho um, collab of driver's license but that's it i never really got into him ace um yeah i never got into them i feel so bad that i made this whole powerpoint and i did nothing uh treasure um i really liked jik jin so i was like oh totally i'm gonna get into them i can't wait to get into treasure because they're the only like big group that i'm missing um because i like NCT 17 and the boys and treasure is also another like big group um and I think it would be funny that I got into all of the big groups but um I added here that uh I liked Yadam but apparently he left his group so um <laughs> moving on uh Blackpink I actually got really into Blackpink my dad is the one that really likes Blackpink, and so I got into Blackpink, and yeah, so much that I bought an album of theirs, like the Born Pink album. Like I really enjoy their music. Maybe not so much that I'm a, to say a blink, but yeah, out of all of these like new groups, um, Blackpink uh, is the one that I got more into. Now for the returning groups like Super M, I kind of I kind of was wishing for Super M to come back because I was kind of bored of K-pop, so I was just like, you know what would be kind of cool, Super M. But with the whole Lucas thing, I don't think we're gonna get anything. I do think, if I recall, uh, they did say something about a return, but obviously Lucas is not gonna be a part of it, which. That Lucas thing needs to clear up quick. It's been over a year and like we've got the evidence and the proof and like the information that states that he's good. But who knows, there might be something else going on behind the scenes that is taking longer or maybe he did something that's different. Who knows, I just want this shit to be cleared because I want Lucas in Wavy. They already had their comeback and he's not in it. It's pretty good, but I think it would have been better if Lucas was in it. And then I want some Super M stuff. Come on. Monster X. Um, I, I was kind of in and out of it because my dad, this whole year he started getting more into uh, K-pop groups because I've been listening to K-pop so much and his favorite boy group is monster x so i've been helping him up with uh monster x lore and so because he likes monster x i've been listening to their music more so i need to get into them more tomorrow by together i've been kind of like like low-key i've been popping in and out of their music like without even thinking so i'm just like i should become a more again but like i don't know their fans are still annoying and i'm just like you know what <laughs> but their music is so good i love this new direction that they're taking 
it's awesome. So I can't wait to see the future with uh, TXT. Uh, MCND, I, hmm, I don't remember getting into them at all this uh, year. I've been listening to a lot of Spring. I I really like their song Spring. It's not my favorite, but in and out, I've been just like listening to the song Spring. And I need to get into their music again because I think I did this one Instagram challenge that was like your this number of songs in Instagram depicts your life or whatever. And it was the song. Oh, I forgot what song it was, but it was pretty new. And I thought it was pretty good. So I want to get back into them. VAV, I've never, you know, touched on them in for a while. I recently just liked um, Jacob's post. His, like, Christmas post. That's the closest thing I've ever done. Um, 17. Um, I've been getting more into 17. I mean, I went to their um screening thing and you know it's just just like 17 stuff it's just so good but i haven't gotten into like you know carrot land if you know what i mean like i haven't been watching gose i haven't like checked out any of their other stuff i haven't gotten albums of theirs like i haven't gone in to them but i listen to their music all the time um 17 was my third most listened to, no, I think fourth listened to artist for my Spotify Wrapped, and then BTS and Stray Kids. So I've been steering more into BTS and Stray Kids. Uh, I feel like I have this I don't care anymore with BTS attitude. Like even though they're fans are atrocious sometimes i still like i feel like i could connect with anything bts you know they're going to the army uh j-hope had a bunch of well not a bunch of but like he uh released um jack in the box and then rm released uh indigo you know everybody's releasing their stuff and i really liked it and i want to get back into bts as for stray kids though i've been catching myself so many times saying like oh I wish I was still into straight kids but I refuse to um yeah like it's been going in and out that like I want to get back into straight kids but not really because well not because but uh since I said my dad is getting into uh k-pop now uh he discovered circus by straight kids and I'm like oh my gosh please no like, not, not that it's bad that he's getting into Stray Kids, but, like, the thing is that, like, my, you know, history of being, like, a fan in Stray Kids with the whole, like, stay circus, hoopla, whatever the fuck, I'm just like, no, just any other group except for them, I don't care if you got into J Park, I don't care, just nobody, n- anybody else but not Stray Kids, but... Uh, I keep hooking him up with stuff. Like, I hate their song, Christmas Evil. I don't know why y'all made them get away with that song, but I recommended it to him, and I'm just like, bruh, what the hell am I doing? But yeah, Stray Kids, like, literally this morning, I wanted to get back into, like, Stray Kids. I was looking into my old, like, saved photos and stuff in Instagram, and it was a lot of, like, Bang Chan and Seungmin, it it like I was getting all this nostalgia. I I miss it all. So who knows if I will get back into Stray Kids. So that concludes that part. Next is Woojin related. I didn't end up going to his concert, and it really broke my heart when I realized I was not going to see Woojin in this a very compl- accomplishing moment of his and. With everything I went through with him, like being there since OT9 Stray Kids, and he was my bias and old bias and helping him through this accusation of his, I felt like it would be a great moment to share of me and him meeting because I did have a double VIP ticket. I have recorded a vlog 
of what I did that day instead. I just didn't have the time or motivation to edit it or upload it, so I hadn't uploaded it, but but I plan to upload it soon, even though it might be outdated. Also, the 3.5 period review, I never did it. I was little by little. It just kept straying away. I Now, I forgot most of the plot, so I need to rewatch it to refresh my memory, but I saw the movie through an unlisted YouTube link, and I don't have it anymore. Plus, I saw a few comments saying that it doesn't work anymore. But I swear I'll get that out sooner or later, preferably before the new drama he is a part of, so I can review that too. New stuff. Lately, I've been wanting to do more IRL content for this channel, but the little times I've done IRL content, it didn't really hit. Which is fine, but soon I want to create more. Like, I'm a wannabe Yemi Cifuentes. Like, she really inspired me with the IRL content I want to make, but that will be in the future when I get better equipment, freedom, and time to do so. But also, I don't know if I posted them already, but I made two short vlogs on Wooden Concert. Well, I said that one, I haven't done it yet. But I also did an NCT Dream movie experience vlog, but if I didn't upload them when I put this out, basically looking back into them and editing, I feel like I'm so boring because one, I am awkward. Two, my friends don't know I have a channel. Only a very few good friends know, so I don't vlog my days because I don't want them to find out. Three, I don't go anywhere. I don't do anything really fun. I feel like vloggers go to different places and have more fun lives, but I just go to school and go home because I can't go anywhere else yet. So I look back at these and there could have been a lot I could film, but I'm just insecure and boring. But when I do more IRL content, I will be better with it and I hope it will do good here. I am going to put myself a goal. I know I just said I don't do schedules and stuff, but I want to upload at least one video a month or bi-monthly. That is the least I can do. I remember writing down videos on my planner, like when to edit, when to record, when to double check, and when to upload for 2022, and I did none of it. Hopefully I can do what I actually set, and if I do more than that, it will be much better. But of course, I if I'm motivated enough and have enough time to upload, I will do it, and I can when I want to. I don't know if you know, I mean, I never told anyone, but my favorite channels when it comes to K-pop is Everglow Up and, like I mentioned right now, Yemi Cifuentes. I was going to do my commentary channel about Woojin even before Everglow Up did hers, but I was scared. But it was until her initial Woojin video that inspired me to do mine and as she kept going with her content I really liked it and I realized we both share a lot of the same views and she did not care about what other people said because in the end it's their problem and I fuck with that and so my k-pop commentary videos are mainly because of her and with Yami I discovered her on TikTok I found out she had a YouTube channel and I've been obsessed with her whole theme, aesthetic, her style. Like seriously, at first I was not into bright and colorful colors or the way she decorated her room, but now I like that stuff more now and I keep watching her stuff. I just love the way she is. We're both Latina, so I relate to her a lot and watching her videos makes me want to do more IRL stuff and like low-key, I'm just trying to be her at this point. Like, if you look at my channel, I'm just a wannabe Everglow Up and Yemi C. Fuentes combined. I know I have to be different. I don't want to be a carbon copy of them. But I mean, just content-wise, I really want to kind of reflect those two creators with my K-pop content. And I want to let you know what my vision for the channel is. Who I'm trying to... I just want to show who I'm trying to respectfully imitate. I always wanted this to be a K-pop variety channel and I obviously have my own humor and personality 
So I will do a lot of more stuff than just the two things I mentioned, but I wanted to kind of show who I kind of look up to when it comes to K-pop content. And I think that's everything I wanted to say, so I hope everyone had a great 2022 because I for sure didn't, and I wish everyone a better 2023. I will see you when I see you. Bye.